Hi, hello and welcome to another video by the scientist formerly known as Nigelli. Today I would like to show you how you can make these vintage cola mirrors from soda cans. A long time ago a friend gave me a cola mirror for my birthday. I still like the vintage style today, so I thought how to make smaller and cheaper copies for decorative purposes. In this video I will show you how you can realize this project with flattened soda cans, a free picture editing program GIMP and a water-based inkjet transfer paper. What you need for this project are flattened soda cans. I already posted a video how to do this, just follow the link in the upper right corner. Beside flattened soda cans you also need this transfer paper. Since I only have an inkjet printer, I needed a water-based inkjet transfer paper. I bought it on AliExpress. You find a link below in the description of the video. In addition, you need also a colorless clear lacquer spray to fix the ink on the transfer paper. And of course, you need a computer and a printer and the free software GIMP. The process to make these uh, soda can mirrors consists of the following steps. The first one is to take a picture from a cola mirror or you download a picture from the internet. Then you process your picture in the computer with the free software GIMP. The processed picture thereafter is printed onto the transfer paper. The picture that was printed onto the transfer paper is transferred thereafter to the flattened soda can. Now you just have to place your picture into a frame and you have your final product. Okay, so I hope you're still fascinated by the looks of this soda can mirror. So let's start by downloading the free software GIMP. Then choose download directly and in Chrome you will see the status of your download in the lower left corner. After you have downloaded the program, restart the computer and open GIMP the first time. I guess the surface of the program will not look the same when you open GIMP the first time, so let's adjust it under Edit and Preferences. Then you will find under Interfaces the possibility to adjust the language. We choose English. In order that your surface looks the same as mine, choose on the theme uh, the second possibility. So you will have the same surface. Ok, in order that all other windows disappear, choose Windows and then Hide Docs. So you will only have a main window. And then you select the single one that we need on the windows and then choose Toolbox as the first one. Beside the toolbox, we also need the layer, so we go to Dockable Dialogs, choose Layer and also we choose on the windows the tool options. And now we have the three windows that we need for our processing. Under Interfaces and Toolbox, we have also the possibility to select all the tools we really need and remove those we do not need. What we need are rectangular select, free select, fuzzy select, pause, color picker, move, rotate, scale, handle and transform, perspective, bucket fill, gradient eraser and clone. I think this is a good combination of what you really need. Then under Icon Theme we choose the first option and uh, then below under uh, Custom Icon Size we choose the size huge so you can really see what you're picking from your toolbox. 
in the description of the video you find a link to a GIMP file that I already processed. Upload this picture the first time via file open and you can see a color mirror. In the window about layers you see that this picture consists of a lot of layers. But you can only see the content of each layer if you click on the eye in the left row. Now we need to have uh, the color picture twice, so we duplicate it by clicking with the right mouse button on the picture. Then choose duplicate and you have already a second picture. On the select choose all and then under edit choose clear and you will end up with a colored screen. This is not what we need because we need a transparent background because we want to have this mirror feeling. Therefore under a layer choose transparency and add alpha channel. Now if you do the same again with select all and then clear you will end up with a transparent background. In your window for layers click with your right mouse button onto the picture and then you come to edit layer attributes and you can give your layer a new name. And now we come to the first processing step. We would like to separate the frame from the rest of the picture. From the uh, toolbox select the free selection tool and then with the mouse clicks draw a line around the object you want to separate. As soon as you get near the starting point, try to click directly on the starting point to complete the selection. Then go to Edit, Copy, Visible. Then go to Edit and Paste in place and you see that you have in the layer window a floating selection. With a mouse click on the floating selection you can make it to a new layer. Then change visibility to only one layer and you can see your copied frame. Now take the rectangular select tool and select places within the frame that you want to remove with clear. Then you choose the fuzzy select tool from the toolbox and choose a certain color. Immediately the selected section is displayed but you see here it's not quite clear. We have to change the threshold. And with the new threshold selected you can select the area quite nicely and with clear you can remove it. Now continue with the fuzzy select tool until you have liberated your frame quite nicely. Another important tool in the toolbox is the eraser tool. You can directly uh, erase or delete areas that you don't want. The size of the eraser tool can be chosen in the tool option window. For the next tool we change the foreground color to black. Then we choose the bucket fill tool in uh, the toolbox window and point on black areas. You see that immediately it fills completely with the desired color. To align the frame with our picture we choose the perspective tool. Um, take one edge of the frame and then position it new so it is aligned with your picture. Then press transform and the program is calculating the new picture. After having prepared the frame we go back to the picture and we do another object, the Coca-Cola frame or layer. So we choose again the um, free select tool and draw a line around the Coca-Cola 
um, sign. Select the area and then uh, paste it again to get a floating area and then again add it as a new layer. Press on the eye in the layer area so you only see the Coca-Cola sign. Now we are ready to again clean up the areas in between. Choose again the fuzzy select tool with the right threshold and you with clear can easily remove all the areas you don't want. As a next tool we use the color picker. Zoom into the picture and after having selected the color picker Point on a color in the picture you want and your foreground is changed. Then use again the bucket fill tool and press on the area you want to have with the same color. And the Coca-Cola logo is filled with the right color. Repeat this process with every color. Now we choose the rotate tool and that's used to align the coca-cola sign with the bottom of the frame actually now you have all the tools that you need to liberate the single uh, sentences or words or logos in the mirror the last thing I want to show you is the clone tool. This tool helps you to pick up the color from a, an adjacent area, so from an area you want and then paste it to an area where uh, the color is different and you would like to change it. In the letter E we see here in the white area a black uh, stroke that we would like to erase with white color. Choose the clone tool, place the cursor in the color you need, press Ctrl and do a mouse click. You can now distribute the uploaded color with mouse clicks. After having separated all the single logos, we press on the eye to see everything and now we have the possibility to arrange the different logos in relation to each other. Make sure that the layer you want to move is highlighted in the layer section. Then choose the move tool to relocate your logo to the right position. If everything looks fine we have to now save our picture under file and export. Now the tricky thing is that we have to export it as a PNG file. Only this file is the one that uh, the printer can recognize areas where there is no color to print. After having processed our picture we come now to the uh, step where we print out the picture onto our transfer paper. The transfer paper I used is given in the description of the video. In order to use the paper effectively I printed two pictures on the sheet. Now you need some clear colorless uh, spray lacquer to fix the ink of the print out. If you do not do this step the ink of your print will uh, erase or wash off when you soak the paper in water. After the lacquer has uh, dried, then resize the picture with scissors to the desired size. Soak the picture in hand warm water for about 30 to 60 seconds together with the flattened aluminum sheet. When you see that the foil from your print uh, is a little bit moving, 
try to slide it onto your flattened soda can in order not to have any kind of air bubble below the foil do everything on the water then carefully take the flattened soda can out of the water and then with uh, the paper that is left in the water pot remove residues on the top do not apply any kind of force to the foil and now we are already at the end the only thing uh, left is we have to place our soda can mirror into a nice frame here you see one i bought at ikea uh, remove all the parts that you don't need and then place your mirror inside and here is your final product a coca-cola mirror on a soda can and if you like that project how to make a cola mirror on a soda can then please subscribe to my channel and check out all my other videos stay creative and so long